Welcome into DRF Sportsbook's betting breakdown show where we are breaking down this weekend's NFL action from Vikings Lions all the way to England France. It is a football filled weekend that is bound to make us some money. We're breaking down Vikings Lions today, moving on into Chiefs Broncos, a little Dolphins Chargers action, and we're going to wrap things up with England France, a fantastic World Cup showdown where there is a strong Strong possibility the winner of England France goes on to win the entire World Cup two of the best teams in the entire world according to ELO ratings now I haven't watched a lot of soccer this season uh, outside of the United States this World Cup season so I'm kind of going into that one blind but broken down some things trying to figure it out and spoiler alert I love France so Vikings Lions are going to get us started here today the Lions are two-point favorites against the 10-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. But the Lions, if you look over the last five weeks, one of the best teams in the entire National Football League. After starting off, I believe, 1-6, something terrible, they are now 5-7. and seven. They're 4-1 and one straight up over their last five. They're 5-0 and oh against the spread over that same time span, over that same five-game winning streak. And look, they've got it done offensively. Their defense isn't playing as bad as they were. I mean, they were on pace to be one of the historically worst defenses ever. And all of a sudden, they've kind of turned the page. And they aren't historically bad. They're still bad, but they're not terrible. They're going to struggle covering Justin Jefferson. But against the Bills on Thanksgiving, they stopped and or at least slowed down Stephon Diggs a good amount. So I imagine they're going to use that same game plan on Justin Jefferson. A lot of jamming, a lot of making him work for every yard, giving, making just messing up his timing, everything like that. Because if Justin Jefferson gets going, it's going to be a long day for the Lions. And they're going to have to watch out for Dalvin Cook. But should be worth being noted, the Lions are two-point favorites in this game, which is absurd. Essentially a pick though, since it is home field, and two points is about what home field gets you. It is worth being noted, the Vikings opened as favorites in this game. So Vegas, people talking a lot about this week, Vegas doesn't respect the Vikings. No, the public doesn't respect the Vikings. Vegas respects them. Vegas opened this lineup at Minnesota minus one and a half, which means Vegas thinks the Vikings are better. So let's stop with this narrative that Las Vegas, the odds makers, aren't respecting the Minnesota Vikings. Do you think maybe the Vikings should have been bigger favorites? Maybe, but Vegas is just making lines based off what they kind of think and also what they believe the public will do. They made this line Minnesota minus one and a half, and within 24 hours, less than 24 hours, the Lions were all the way to being minus one. The Lions were then favored, and a big reason for that is Sharps won all over it, so the money comes in, it, it messes up the line, it changes the line, it sways it one way or another, but the public is riding with the Lions too. I guess it's the hard knocks, bump, something, but the public absolutely loves Detroit in this game. 64% of the public on Detroit to cover. A lot of that money came in when they were dogs, now they're favorites, but the money still comes in on the Lions. They were minus one. They then moved up to minus two and a half. It's come down at Detroit minus two. But I want to get it out there that no, the, the Vegas doesn't hate the Detroit Lions. The public hates the Vegas doesn't hate the Minnesota Vikings. The public hates the Minnesota Vikings. And for good reason. Minnesota this season, yeah, they're 10 and 2, but they have a 0.8 point differential. They're not a team that goes and outscores other teams by a lot of points. I mean, they got absolutely boat raced by the Dallas Cowboys. And for a minute, they had a negative point differential with only two losses. Minnesota is the 20th best team in the NFL, according to DVOA, but they have one of the top records. Make it make sense. They win close games, and you know how they do it? They turn you over. They're third in the National Football League in takeaways this season. They're top five in turnover differential. They average, um, what is it? They, they're plus eight in the turnover differential on the season so far. Um, but Detroit, on the other hand, despite having one of the worst defenses, they have one of the best offenses. They're 13th in DVOA. According to Advanced Analytics, the Lions are the better team in this game. And they figured out how to not give away the ball. So if Minnesota's not forcing turnovers, the other team isn't making mistakes. Minnesota has a tough time creating points and beating teams. 
I said they had, what, 20 turnovers this season. They forced 12 interceptions, 8 fumbles. But the Lions over this 5-game winning streak, how many have they given away? Let's see. Just 3 turnovers. Just 3 turnovers in this 5-game streak where they're 5-0 and against the spread, 4-1 and straight up. Their previous 5 games, 10 turnovers. They were turning the ball over at an insanely high clip during their beginning of the season, their bad start, their bad time. And then once Jared Goff and company figured out how to take care of the football, things started to go their way. They've picked up four wins out of five, and they're looking like a solid team. Minnesota Vikings have to turn you over in order to get going. And there's a lot of different things that are in favor of the Detroit Lions. For one, Detroit's 11-1 against the spread, against defenses allowing a completion percentage of 61% or higher since the start of last season. 11 and 1 against the spread. Now a lot of those they weren't necessarily the favorites. This is kind of weird territory for Detroit Lions and Detroit Lions fans and Detroit Lions betters. Normally when you're in this situation they're what? Double digit underdogs. But now the Lions are favored, but they are 11 and 1 against the spread and they do have an extremely potent passing attack. Viking secondary is abysmal. We might see like a 45-40 type of game. Remember the Lions-Seahawks a few weeks ago? We might be in store for that type of game because both of these defenses struggle to stop what the other team does really well. Everything tells me to go Detroit in this game, but my gut then makes me think, can the Lions slow down Justin Jefferson? If the Detroit Lions are able to deploy what they did against Stephon Diggs and the Buffalo Bills back on Thanksgiving... I think the Lions not only win this game, but they cover. So I'm going Detroit minus two. All the numbers tell me Detroit. My gut kind of tells me the Vikings because of Justin Jefferson and Dalvin Cook. But Kirk Cousins, he might make a mistake here or there. Powerline likes Detroit minus four. Uh, game Simulator likes Detroit to win by four or three. So regardless of what you're looking at, the numbers are telling you Detroit. I got to go with the numbers. The historical trends are tell me, telling me to go with Detroit. I think the Lions offense just outduels Minnesota in an extremely, extremely fun early slate game. Moving on from that, we're going Chiefs Broncos. Broncos are plus nine and a half, folks. And I know the Broncos are bad, but offensively, they're bad, right? Defensively, they're one of the best units in the entire National Football League, which makes me wonder, can the Chiefs cover a 10-point spread, essentially? The Chiefs have to win by 10 in order to cover this game, and I don't know if they're capable of doing that. Not trying to diminish anything that the Chiefs have done. They're one of the best offenses. They average 29 points per game. But the, the Denver defense allows just 17 points per game. Yeah, I know the Denver offense only scores 14, and they haven't scored 17 points or more in the United States since October 2nd against the Raiders, which was a loss. But, I mean, if the, if the, if the Chiefs score 24, all that the Broncos have to score is 13, and they've done that pretty consistently this season, scoring one touchdown um, and doing the rest. What, the, the Broncos have played in... 12 games this season. They have 14 touchdowns, so averaging just over one touchdown a game. Give me a couple more field goals. I think the Broncos can cover this spread. Coming into this, though, a few trends that make me lean Kansas City. Denver's just 1-4 against the spread at home this season and 10-12 and against the spread since the start of the 2020 season. So we all talk about that mile-high home field advantage, that the, the air's thinner, it's harder, the home field advantage is different in Denver. That, hasn't, that, that isn't true. That's a, that's a fake, fake narrative that I think Denver Bronco fans try to tell themselves to sleep better at night as they're stroking the picture of Russell Wilson in a Seahawks jersey because that's the Russell Wilson they thought they were going to get now that he has only thrown eight touchdowns and he has, what, 12 bathrooms in his house. If you haven't seen that on TikTok, go check it out on TikTok. Someone's tracking the amount of touchdowns Russell Wilson has thrown compared to the amount of bathrooms in his new Denver home. Absolutely hilarious. Denver's also 0-10 against the spread against teams who force one turnover or less per game. The Chiefs only force one turnover per game and actually have a negative turnover differential on the season. Minus four in the turnover department on the season for the Kansas City Chiefs. But for some odd reason, Denver does not play well against defenses that aren't opportunistic. What it tells me is when a defense is forcing one turnover or less, they're not forcing the issue. They're playing back in their zones. They're playing back in man, and they're letting you get the getting the yards 
but they're going to make the stops when it comes up. They're going to get the timely sack. They're going to do something big. Um, and they're just not going to be opportunistic and try and jump routes and, and rack up the interceptions, which tells me that's how Denver normally feasts. And the fact they're 0-10 against the spread, against t- defenses that kind of force them to play their game, uh, they, don't, they don't do well. And this season included, they don't do well since the start of last season. Um, worth noting, though, Kansas City is 2-4 and four against the spread when favored by 3.5 to 10.5, 10-18 since the start of 2020. The Chiefs have been big-time favorites a lot in the Patrick Mahomes era and that leads you to have a bad record against the spread and I think this is one of those games that the Chiefs should win should dominate but I don't know if they're going to dominate and win by a final score of 10. Andy Reid though is 13 and 2 against the spread in road games versus bad teams. The pick the value here I truly believe is on Denver only 32% of the public is on Denver against the spread. I got to go Denver to cover. And I know what I just said about the home field advantage not being a real thing. Uh, Kansas City performs really well in road games against bad teams in the Andy Reid era. I know everything I said. Denver's 0-10 against the spread. There's nothing really here to make me go, yes, I'm all over the Broncos. And yet, I'm going Broncos plus 9.5. I have faith in their defense. This is what my thinking is, right? The Denver defense should be able to hold Kansas City to 24 points. Is it out of the realm of possibility for me to expect the Broncos to score 13 points? I don't think so. I think the Broncos defense, which is one of the best units in the NFL, will have themselves a good game and they'll be able to cover the spread against the Chiefs. Moving on, we're going Dolphins, Chargers, Folks, I think we're overreacting to that Dolphins 49ers loss. At least Vegas is. Because Chargers plus three is an absolutely absurd line. The Dolphins should be more like six and a half in this game, if you ask me. The Chargers are a fun team. They're not a good team. The Chargers have uh, not lived up to expectations at all this season. Chargers are six and six. Not good, uh, especially when they were dark horse Super Bowl contenders. They've gone three and one. Excuse me, one and three over their last four. Their only win was a 25 24 win against the Arizona Cardinals that required a comeback in order to win. They've dropped games to the Raiders, the Chiefs, and the 49ers over that time period. They also got blown out at home, excuse me, on the road. No, at home against the Seahawks. I can't read schedules for some reason. With all that being said, I think we're overreacting to what just happened in the 49ers game. That's one of the best defenses in the entire national. Look, I'd go out on a limb. The 49ers are the best defense in the NFL, and it's not particularly close in my personal opinion. I think they have some of the best game wreckers on that side of the football. They scheme things up perfectly. And that was Kyle Shanahan coaching against the guy that he's coached with for years. Kyle Shanahan knows each and every idiosyncrasy of Mike McDaniel, and I think that's what we saw bear out in that game. Staley doesn't have that type of repertoire or rapport with Mike McDaniel, and that's why I think the Dolphins are going to come out and they are going to make an absolute statement. Give me Miami minus three. I think they win by at least seven, so I will gladly take Miami minus three. Three. They're led by Tua Tagovailoa, who is one of, if not well, according to all the statistics, according to EPA plus CPOE, completion percentage over expectation, he's the most efficient quarterback in the entire National Football League. Miami is just much, much better than the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers 20th in EPA per play, 27th in uh, defensive EPA per play. Miami first in EPA per play. Uh, Tua Averages six and a half yards per pass this season. Second in DVOA, fifth in EPA per play. Chargers haven't been able to play at home well. Two and three against the spread, 10 and 12 since 2020. Chargers defense is not San Francisco, folks, and I'm hammering Miami. There's not much to this game. Miami is the much better team. I don't know what our power line is seeing. Look, I'm going to show you guys what the DRF Sports power line is saying. Chargers minus one. No, 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 no. Look at game simulators. Miami to win by five. Miami to win by seven. The game simulators know what's up. Power line, not sure what they're seeing. I think they're overvaluing the Chargers somehow still. Don't get me wrong. Chargers, Justin Herbert, absolute stud. He is not a social media quarterback. Justin Herbert is the real deal. 
But this Dolphins offense from top to bottom is so much better. The Chargers defense is not very good. They're banged up on both sides of the ball. Who knows if we're going to see Mike Williams. Chargers might be able to score a little bit, but Miami will be able to score a lot more. Give me Miami minus three. I think they win by a lot more than three. So if you want to alt spread that to Miami minus six and a half, I don't blame you. I might be doing the same exact thing. Miami Dolphins are good, folks. They're a true Super Bowl contender. Give me Miami minus three.